Uh, the Giants hired Brian Dable. Everybody kind of assumed that he was going to go down to Miami. Why he would take this job over the Miami job is beyond me. I mean, really, you're moving right down the street, so maybe location had something to do with it because he's been in Buffalo for quite a while. I don't know that that's right down the street. I it's, think those are two different worlds. They I, are, but it's it's same state and everything. I, it is two different worlds, 100%, because New York City is nothing like Buffalo, New York. Yeah. But, so, he's, so he's accustomed to the high taxes. But the, the idea of moving down to Miami, it, it, obviously, I maybe not obviously, I wonder if Miami just screwed this up by not being ready to jump on this, right? Miami wasn't ready to make their hire, and the Giants were like, we want you, period. At that point, do you just go with the one that, that you were offered? Like, you know firsthand, like, I know I'm going to get this job. I got to take this one because I may not be offered the other one. Well, that could have something to do with it. But- or could it also be that he thinks that uh, Daniel... Jones is a better quarterback than Tua. I see. I think the difference is, is we have enough information where I think he has enough room and leverage to move on from Daniel. He coached Tua and he knows what Tua can do and what he can't do. And I wonder if that, he said, I'll take my chances with a rebuild where I get to pick my quarterback. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. There's because he uh, saw what Tua was able to do with all the talent that Alabama has. But that talent differential is gone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. You're right. You're. I'm telling you. Right. I look at Max Jones. I look at Tua. I look at Jalen, and these guys are fine. But there's something to you know knowing that the other teams, you know, defensive front is is there's a coin flip chance that they're a lot better than your offensive line. You played your entire career without that being true. You know. You had four or five receivers that were substantially better than any defensive back the other team could throw. You get in the NFL, and that you might have won. You might yes. have won where you have a mismatch if you can line it up properly. Like, yeah, that's, no, you're not wrong. That's that's you play a you play a certain way in college, and then you get into the pros, and it's not that they're bad. It's just you you just spent three years not really being pushed. Oh, it's it's incredibly difficult to to figure out, right? It's. He he did perfectly fine with Jalen Waddell uh, once he came back healthy, once Tua came back healthy this year. But it is a whole different world. Like it, it's a completely different world. So I mean, he wasn't he wasn't very good at the end of the season. No, they no. went on that run for a minute, and then after that run, which was nothing but just garbage teams. Yeah, but, once they played against uh, uh, against the Titans, they, I mean, yeah, the, the best win they have is is they beat the, they beat the Pats twice. But that's, that's it. <laughs> there's a Dolphins that's, fan on my Twitter timeline. And he just tweeted out and said, Tua looks like the type of guy that tries to start tickle fights. <laughs> not what, the, what you want in your quarterback here. No, you're probably not wrong. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.